Sonic Mania is a gift to old school Sonic fans. This game provides longtime fans with a nostalgic vibe that will keep you hooked as soon as you boot up the menu. I immediately noticed the widescreen view, which helped me anticipate more of the obstacles ahead of me. I couldn't even imagine going back to the Sega Game Gear after playing Sonic Mania. You will see familiar stages like Green Hill Zone and Chemical Plant Zone, but they are completely remade and introduce fresh challenges for even the most seasoned Sonic veterans. The familiar faces are still kicking it. Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles are all playable characters right off the bat, with their own unique abilities. Tails can briefly fly to certain areas, Knuckles can glide and climb walls, and Sonic, of course... Well, you know what Sonic does. These different abilities are imperative to utilize if you want to collect all the secrets hidden throughout the zones. Certain areas are inaccessible to certain characters, so the replay value is a huge factor if you want to get every collectible. Tails is probably the best because he can fly through levels, kind of like the Tanuki suit in Mario or the Cape in Mario, but he's the lame character so we don't want to play as him. Knuckles is probably my favorite character in any game, and I still didn't really have that much fun playing as him because it feels as if you're running in quicksand and there were too many times where it kills the momentum and flow of the game. It's really just, it's a game where you want to go fast, man. I'm telling you. Speaking of momentum, Sonic Mania is all about momentum. Although you can utilize the spin dash in order to gain speed instantly, a lot of the jumps you're going to need to make will be initiated off of head starts that result in precise landing in order to progress. The Sonic franchise as a whole has gained the reputation of, well, being a baby game. Many Sonic pessimists will claim that you just need to hold the control stick forward and go through loops and the game will basically just play for you. That is a severe misconception because Sonic Mania thrives through its precise platforming and deep exploration. I will say that if you want to just speed through a level and beat your high scoring through like time attack mode, that's great. It's a blast to go through loops and spring through the springy things, I totally get that, but Sonic Mania has a lot more to offer than that. Exploration is where Sonic Mania shines. A great example of exploration is Green Hill Zone. There are multiple paths and secrets to be uncovered here. The first round, you might go through the waterfalls at the bottom of the stage, but then the second time around, you might go through the upper path by gaining momentum off ramps, soaring into the sky, and jumping platform by platform. There was a great variety between all of the boss battles. The health system in the entire Sonic franchise made these boss battles a lot less enjoyable, however. Even though I would get hit every now and then, I would always have another ring, so I would just collect that one ring and then kill the boss. Director Christian Whitehead did a tremendous job keeping the vintage Sonic aesthetic in mind. If you happen to play the old Genesis games, then this will be a familiar game for you. If you told someone this game was made like 20 years ago, they would probably believe you. From the sounds to the music, Sonic Mania seems as if it was ported straight from the Genesis, and I mean that in the best way possible. As far as music is concerned, this might be the greatest soundtrack of all time. Just listen to this. The issue I had with Sonic Mania is that there are only 4 new zones compared to 8 returning zones. The music, design, and atmosphere of all the new levels definitely intrigued me the most during my 5 hour playthrough. This made me wonder why they didn't focus on creating even more zones. I hope if there's ever a sequel they'll focus on as many new zones as possible. The blue sphere bonus stage from Sonic 3 Returns, and it is a fun throwback but it gets stale after a while. They use this as a way to unlock extra content in the menu, but I don't think it's worth completing everything because it's really just not that fun after a while. The other bonus stage is a throwback to Sonic CD, where you're in a 3D view. You need to collect rings to stay alive while collecting the blue balls to gain speed. Once you catch the UFO, you earn a Chaos Emerald. You need to complete all seven stages in order to get the true ending. When deciding whether or not to get this game, you have to factor in level design. The level designers of Sonic Mania decided if it ain't broke, don't fix it.
This tutorial based way of level progression is something that is missing in a lot of modern games and is a big reason why Sonic Mania is such a big deal. This is the greatest 2D Sonic game of all time, and since many of the 3D Sonic games are questionable to begin with, you could very well argue that this is the greatest Sonic game of all time. Whether you're a Sonic fan or not, this is a must buy if you enjoy the 2D platformer genre.